Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. So I took the uh, outside stator off. Had to level the, had to take this off as well. And I noticed when I had the stator, I really didn't realize it was leaning like three quarters inch on one way. So um, took it off, balanced it out, leveled it out. And then I went ahead and wrapped 10 turns all the way around so it's complete. Now this uh, uh, rotor has 10 turns, 14 gauge wire, has a, um, um, has a, a let me see, it's a 0.6 um, resistance in ohms. So uh, 12 volts going into it would be 19 amps. If I put 24 volts into it or 25, it'll be 38 or 37 or 39 amps. So I want to make that variable so I can go below 12 and up to 39 would be the max that I can increase the strength on the field on the inside. So right now I figured while well, I got the coils all wrapped up, um, I checked the resistance, it's right on the money. It's awesome to, to do the calculations through uh, Lens Law to, um, to uh, know exactly what you're doing before you even do it. It's, uh, it's really great. Here's my PMH, I'm charging the, uh, all these magnets right now at their maximum strength. And I figure I did uh, one, two here, and I'll go ahead and do some in front of you guys. So basically, just connect the PMH, and you'll go ahead. I'm sending 24 volts into this, um, and I'm putting the this side's the north, this is the south. So I'm making sure the opposite poles are facing inward, and then it'll charge just like that. So right back at it, you move the coils towards the front, gives it some more strength going into the iron. Do about, I don't know, about 10, 12, uh, nice little jolts. Goal is to saturate that magnet again. Realign the molecules. You see the coils pulling themselves back. So I put a 12 volt battery in here and I connected these wires up and just as I said, um, it pulls 19 amps through and the wire doesn't even get hot. You can leave it connected all the time. So I just want to be able to be able to do multiple different uh, studies here. my test and stuff. The best thing to do is keep everything variable to where you can make adjustments. And the other thing is for you garage enthusiast, um, never change more than one thing at a time because if that change has a big dramatic effect and you change the multiple thing, things, um, there's a uh, good chance that you may not be able to re-replicate it because you, 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 you change too many of the variables. Now we're charging these magnets just like they're little miniature PMHs now. And you can see that the 24 Prong ends all the way around. If you count them as little PMHs, there's really 12.
wish I would have noticed that was disconnected. I might go around and do one more. Oh yeah. Do one more. If you don't have that wire connected, you're not complete into the circuit all the way around. Oh yeah. stuff in good. <coughs> Definitely want them strong. <coughs> and you can think of these magnets like iron core except for they're already saturated. Where the iron core isn't, because the molecules won't stay where they're at, unless it's under some type of tension. Meaning, like this, where you got copper around it. Oh yeah. I can feel that laminate getting pulled out of my hand. Gorilla style. So when I'm done with this, I'll post this video and uh, I'm going to lower back down the um, stator and I'm going to start winding some coils. So I'll post a video tonight. What I'm going to do is start off by maybe winding just four coils and I'll pick like over here, over here, over here, and over here and see what difference. We'll do some studies with them because it's going to take, take a long time to, to get all those coils wound and to tell you the truth, I, you know, I'm not sure if I have enough wire. I got, to, I'm going to wind it with 16 gauge and I guess because the main intent is not to put power on the outside um, stator, is to have the inside generate the, the dipole uh, uh, lens law effect outwardly, so it magnetizes the outside coils. And then we're going to uh, create each each prong end of the stator is going to have a capacitor behind it, so it's 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 going to be um, each individual coil on the stator is going to be a tank circuit, and it's going to have uh, I'll put diodes on the tank circuit to where every time it is charged, it'll release outwardly, out, not back into the system, but we're going to um, possibly send it inward to where it makes the rotor self-excited, in a sense, to where it's producing its own energy, and by doing so, we'll have to see uh, how much how much power it's taken to turn the wheel in order to create this effect and then we'll see how much power we're generating um, and putting back into the system and we'll, we'll work on some things there that I always wanted to um, do with this wheel. Got this shit down. Ask me how many times I've done this. All right, 
but I think we've been around the world there a couple times. And heated those coils up a little bit. All right, well, um, now you can see that each section is a little PMH, and that's how we're gonna treat this, and you're gonna ask yourself, um, well, what happens here? And um, basically, the stator, since it'll be individualized, and it'll be also individually wired, okay? Because there's a lot of experiments I want to do. So one would be three phase, but not right away. The, the second one would be, um, well, the first one that I want to do would be, uh, or the second thing would be is to tie the outsides together like a PMH as well. So the PMH itself has its own tank circuit. Its tank circuit, uh, it will be charged uh, the capacitor will be charged when the um, when the discharging in the coil itself. So what I've noticed is when the wheel is turning by the core, what happens in the oscilloscope is um, when the poles are coming up against. Now hear me out here. So here's my finger, which is a core. And when the pole is approaching my finger, it forces, because the lens effect, it forces the opposite pole of what it is to appear at that end. And with that being said, that this, say if it was south, would be north over here, my finger, it would be pulling in. Now, as it starts leaving, it goes to its opposite side. So now this north over here turns this into a south. So with that being said, there's gonna have to be coils that are individually set up around here. Because remember, Ed said my best wheel is a combination of field magnets and coils. And I believe what you have to do here is on the oscilloscope, it showed me that the uh, system of making electricity is in, you get your power out, your energy out when you have a peak. And that peak needs to be high. And the peak only appears when, if I had a field magnet here, which my two fingers are a field magnet, and this is charged, say with a low voltage, just like you would charge the core on the inside here, the rotor. Um, this becomes, uh, stays its charge, okay? Even though it's not much to interfere, but enough. And when these fields come up and they oppose, that's where you get your peak because when they oppose, the magnetic field uh, has, is already saturated. It cannot any longer uh, take any more uh, uh, electrons in and it, they'll get forced out into your uh, conductors. So, um, that's how the peak uh, shows up on my oscilloscope and also on my uh, analog meter. Because my analog meter was in sync with my oscilloscope in a way of you could visually see that the needle would stay down longer than it would go up. So that means every time this pole passed here and if this, to get the wheel turning in a resonant way, you have to have the opposite pole appearing so it tracks the wheel and pulls the iron but it also flips the poles so it's not uh, having it built any built-in resistance in the magnetic field so um, you have to have that but then like Ed says a combination you have to have some presence of, of, um, um, of uh, a magnet that stays its poles because that's where you're going to get your your peaks back out so we're going to experiment with that once we get the coils all built on the stator, which is sitting right there, upright. You guys see the stator? Yeah, you do. That thing is a beast from the east. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get this going. And get that lowered back down. These are nice and gorilla style, charged. And um, 
Let the experiments begin. Leave your comments. Peace out.